Welcome to Live Live! Good morning. Is this thing on? Okay, good. Not going to work real good. I gotta move it. Okay, today, today's message is about nothing. Kind of an honor, honorary way, with, you know. Here's a Labor Day, and I'm going to try and talk about nothing. For many years, you know, I went through life doing, doing nothing. You know, God spoke to me many, many times saying, you know, I need to get this done, and I need to do this, and I need to do this. But, you know, I just kind of put it off the side and did nothing. But one day, he came to me and he says, I want you to meet somebody that will take your life and turn it completely around. Somebody that I'm going to send to this earth to die for you so that you can receive me freely. And I thought, well, no way. This is impossible. You know what I mean? The possibilities of being able to... to see somebody, reach somebody that doesn't exist or you can't talk to them face to face. It's just unreal, unthinkable. So I did nothing. I did nothing for years. And then one day he said, I got something I need you to do. And I thought, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to stand before a congregation and talk about faith without works is dead. No, no way. No, I'm just new at this, you know. Why me, Lord? I don't, I don't need this. I don't, I don't want this. I'd rather just sit back and take what you give me and give you nothing in return. Let me tell you something. Doing nothing for the Lord leaves you with a big empty hole. It leaves you with a void in your life that... Nothing will fill. Nothing in, the, in this world will ever, ever fill it up. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to do so many different things. We're supposed to become disciples and to minister in, uh, to the people of the world, to share God's love with all, of, all the nations, you know, to, to be out there and to step out of our comfort zone. And instead of doing nothing, stand up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And today I want to do something for him. Today I want to share something that will make him more popular. We're also supposed to meet together. We're supposed to help each other. We're supposed to meet each other's needs. We're supposed to teach each other. We're supposed to comfort each other. And instead, the many times we find ourselves sitting on the couch thinking, you know... I don't have anything to do today. I'm just going to turn on the TV and watch TV. Yeah, I probably could go down to the neighbor's house and sit and talk with them and maybe share the word of God with them. But nah, I'd just rather do nothing today. Today's, today's an empty day. Today I'm just going to do nothing. Well, I'm here to tell you today, doing nothing gets you nothing. But doing something will get you everything. And I know, I know for a fact that we're supposed to do a lot. But, you know, we're, we're just not worthy of it sometimes. We're not worthy of doing something in the name of Jesus Christ. We haven't learned enough. You know, like Steve, Steve, you know, the pastor talked about yesterday, last, well, not yesterday, a couple weeks ago. You know, we're supposed to be a group, a family, a church. We're supposed to come together and minister to those who don't know Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be out there lifting, lifting these people up, lifting each other up so that... When the time comes, and as my wife would say, when it hits the fan, we're there for each other. We use, 
we can draw off each other. We can use each other's experiences, each other's knowledge, instead of just crawling in a hole, doing nothing. I myself have found peace in the name of the Lord. I found peace sharing my life with Jesus Christ. The blessings have been overwhelming. I know I shouldn't pause. Everything, everything, <laughs> everything relates back to doing nothing. I want to ask you today: How many of you out there have been like me, sitting on the sitting on the couch watching TV, thinking, you know, I really, I really needed to get this done today. I really need to do this today. I really should go see that guy on the street because you know he looks like he's been in a lot of pain the past few days. But we just turn on the TV and do nothing. I'm sure there's a lot of us out there that say it's, well, it's, it's not up to me. You know, it's, it's the pastor's job. You know, it's, it's so-and-so's job at the church. It's the prayer leader's job. You know, they're supposed to go, go, go talk to these people. I can tell you that's wrong. Let's give me that first slide. Here in Matthew Here in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, it reads, "Then Jesus came I can't see that screen, so let me try something here. I'm going to I'm going to pull a Steve and try technology. If it'll cooperate. Come on. Turn. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, laugh. Old age is, old age is a, is, is a, old age is bad. I mean, we, First we can't see, then we, then oh, it's just terrible. Matthew 20, 28, 18 to twenty. Then Jesus came to them and said, "All authority is in is in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded commanded you. And surely am am I with you always." To the very end of age. So I mean right here he's telling us. We need to go out and make disciples of the nation. We need to go out and baptize people. Whoa. Now, now I don't know about this kid. But I don't think I can handle that. But this is, these are the things that he's telling us to do. You know we're supposed to. Instead of sitting in the church or sitting at home. We're supposed to be out there sharing the love of God with Everyone. Instead of doing nothing. Come on. Drop that. Phones. Drive you crazy. Here in Matthew 25. It reads. Not giving up meeting together. As some are in habit of doing. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you do. And all the more as you see the day approaching. What day approaching? Is he talking about the the end of time? Hmm. As we've all seen and heard in the news and watched and watched what's going on in the world. Yeah, it's close, guys. Try again. All right. But I can stand here and tell you, you're not alone in this. There's a... I'm just as bad as the rest. I mean, I could have been doing a whole lot more instead of just sitting on my couch that day watching the TV program. I was watching a program some of you guys might relate to. I was watching Crocodile Dundee. I was watching the part where 
His girlfriend had been kidnapped by a drug lord, and he was in search of somebody to help him. So his friend takes him to meet this group of gang leaders, I guess. And he asked the gang, the gang to help him, and they're like, well, what's that in it for me? And he says to him, well, what'd you do yesterday? And one of the group says, we didn't do nothing. Do we want to be that? Do we want to be that gang that, that says, we didn't do nothing? Knowing good and well that our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven has cried out to us and said, stop doing nothing. Do something. And I know it's the most difficult thing to do, something. But we're called by our Father. And I know we're all, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. As it states in Romans 3.23. But I can tell you, without doing something, what's all this worth? Why do we come? What do we believe in? We, we cry out and we say we're Christians and we believe in Jesus Christ, but we do nothing. I was talking to a gentleman just the other day. He said, you know, I noticed you were by yourself with just girls to help you. And he, says, he, said, he said it to me this way. He said, but the girls are prettier to look at. And he paused himself and he said, oh, I didn't mean, to mean it like that. And I, I mean, I understood what he meant. Okay, girls are prettier to look at than a bunch of sweaty guys. Fine. But he called himself, he said, I'm a Christian and, and we shouldn't talk that way. And I, I told him, I said, I don't, I don't feel like I deserve that title to be called Christian. I said, because what Christian means to me is to be Christ-like. And I said, I don't come nowhere near. I said, I've not done half of what my Lord has done for me. Probably not a third. And I said, and I surely wouldn't go and die for somebody. I said, but he did. And he just kind of stood there looking at me. I said, you know, I said, I said, in the coming weeks, I said, I'm preaching to, to preach a sermon. I said, on nothing. And he kind of looked at me funny. He said, what do you mean by that? I said, on all the things that we're supposed to do. But don't. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, well, we're supposed to visit. We're supposed to share. We're supposed to heal. We're supposed to, to bless. We're supposed to be with each other. We're supposed to, and I just went on and on and on. And like I'm doing right now, I'm going on and on and on. And he looked at me, he said, you know, I hadn't given it that much thought. He said, but thanks. And I was like, what? He said, you just made me feel real bad. I was like, why? He says, because I'm like the rest of them. I don't do anything. He said, and I never gave it a single thought that, okay, yeah, maybe I should go do something. Maybe I should be Christ-like. Maybe I should take the word Christianity and make it mean something. So as the band makes his way back up to the stage, let us pray. Father, we come before you searching for the ability to honor your requests and to give you our full devotion as we work to be better servants for you. May we take this message to heart and follow your words keeping you first in our lives. Sharing your love with the world. Father, give us the strength to do this so that we may honor you every day of our lives. So that what your son did for us will not be forgotten by us nor anyone in the world. Because we will show your love to everyone we meet. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and give you the praise and the glory for all things. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen.